Hi, my name is Rick Mello, Senior Technical Service Representative for Haldex. In this short video, we're going to discuss two of the most common air brake systems found on trailer systems. The trailer demonstration board I will be using today is in two sections here. The front axle here will represent a dolly type trailer. Some people refer to it as a converter dolly or a con gear. The rear section back here, this back axle, will represent a typical semi-trailer. Found at the front or the nose of the trailer, you will notice that there are two separate glad hands. You have a blue glad hand, uh, in most cases will be for the service brakes or the control, it's also referred to. And you have a red, which is referred to as the supply glad hand or the emergency glad hand. These are the only two ways that we couple up as far as the air system to the tractor unit. Let's first uh, discuss a typical semi-trailer air system. We'll start with the trailer supply system. At the start of each day, the driver must supply air to the trailer's air tank. He accomplishes this using the red dash control valve, also known as the supplied control valve. It sends air down to the trailer's nose at the red glad hand. The air comes down the supply line and is connected to the Haldex full function valve. The bottom section of this valve has a pressure protection valve in it. To protect this supply line in the event that this air tank fails, it's required by law to protect this supply line to at least 70 psi during this failure mode and that there is no spring parking brake drag. Now let's discuss the trailer service brake system. The service brakes are controlled off the blue glad hand or the control line which comes back to the same full function valve only to a different port labeled control or service port. Inside the full fu function valve right at this location here is a typical service relay valve. The full function valve is mounted directly to the air tank, so now this relay valve has a supply of air from the service reservoir, and when we modulate this control signal, either using the foot control valve or the trailer hand valve, the more we put air to this relay valve, the more it takes out of the tank, delivers out of its service deliveries, and out to the front section of the double diaphragm spring brake which in this front section is your service chamber. As the driver releases the service brake control in the cab, either the foot control valve or the hand control valve, he drops the air pressure in the control line and eventually down to atmospheric pressure. The relay valve has, just like in any relay valve, a quick release feature. So as he drops the air pressure in the service control line, the air pressure out to the brake chambers, the service brake chambers, drops in proportion to it out a quick release feature found on the side, back side of this valve. Now let's discuss the parking brake system found in this typical semi-trailer. Just as in a truck or a truck tractor, since 1975 we were required to park this vehicle mechanically and we do this via using spring parking brakes found on the rear section of the chambers. How we control it is up in the dash in the cab of the tractor is the red control knob and that control knob when pushed in not only supplies the tanks with air but as air comes down through that it also takes and sends that air to the parking side of the spring chamber which then in turn releases the parking brakes. In order to park, the driver pulls the dash control valve, the red knob, evacuates all the air in the supply line at the dash control valve, which triggers the full function valve parking section to evacuate all the air in the two spring chambers out the back through a quick release feature. The emergency brakes found in this vehicle are one, of the one in the same as the parking brakes. 
what differs about a truck tractor versus a trailer is there's a provision for emergency brakes on a truck and the way we achieve it is using two separate service brake systems. You are not going to find two separate service brake systems on a typical semi-trailer because it's not required. It's required that in the event that we vent the red glad hand to atmosphere, the emergency glad hand, that the emergency brakes come on immediately and promptly and hold for at least 15 minutes. If we were to re remove that glad hand, it would be one of the same as pulling on the red knob dash control valve and evacuating the supply line going to the trailer or the full function valve, which would then in turn immediately evacuate the air in the spring sections out the back of the full function valve and our spring parking brakes are our emergency brakes also. Now let's discuss the anti-lock brake system found in this semi-trailer. In 1998, March 1st, the federal government required that all new trailers have an anti-lock brake system. Well, let's talk about the components that consist of this. You have your wheel end components, which is your sensor and your tone exciter ring. You have your ABS modulator, which, which is built into the full function valve and it's built into the service relay portion of this full function valve. We've had to add this top section, which are two solenoids. One is called the hold, one is called the dump. We then have, which a lot of people refer to as the brain, the ECU or ECM, which stands for electronic control unit or electronic control module. It's no more than a microprocessor or computer. It looks at the wheel ends. The sensors are putting out an AC pulse. The faster the wheel spins, the higher the voltage or the faster it changes cycles. It tells the computer how fast each wheel end is moving. It's pre-programmed that if one or more of the wheels slows down too quickly, it sends a signal to the solenoids on top of the service relay valve. The hold solenoid stops the driver's foot pedal input to that valve and the dump solenoid opens up and releases a small portion of the air found in the service chamber. And it can do this several times a second and keep the wheels from locking up. Now let's discuss a typical dolly air system, also known as a converter dolly or con gear. Its basic function is it's a standalone unit that when connected to a semi-trailer converts that semi-trailer into what the government refers to as a full trailer. It gives the front axle a steering capability. Now you'll notice one of the major difference between a semi-trailer is we only have single service chambers on this type of vehicle. Not all converter dollies use just those types of chambers. Some in some portions of the North America will use spring brakes. But a majority are just service chambers only. So what we find is we still have to have park capability and emergency brake capability on a converter dolly. We have to have a special or a separate air valve found up here to accomplish this. Since there are no spring brakes, obviously we are not going to park or make emergency brakes using a mechanical means. So this valve up here, called an emergency control valve, during a supply line evacuation, as though the driver were parking the vehicle or the emergency glad hand fell off, this valve converts the trailer's air tank, or the converter dolly's air tank, or re-diverts it up through itself and to the control port of the relay valve the service relay valve. When it does that, the service relay valve takes air out of the tank, sends it to the service chambers on both sides of the vehicle, and it parks and makes an emergency brake application using the service chambers. Now a converter dolly also requires an ABS system. Now since there is no spring brakes, we won't use a full function valve we will use just the service relay ABS valve found 
built into the full function valve. Here are the solenoids, the hold and the dump. And again, no spring brakes, but we have a, an emergency control valve. So this here is the anti-lock provision, along with two additional wheel end sensors and tone rings. Unlike the semi-trailer that utilized the full function valve, there was a built-in pressure protection valve in that full function valve to protect the supply line and to fill the air tank on the semi. On this dolly system, we have to use a separate pressure protection valve that tees right into the supply line, and this is responsible for allowing the tank to fill, and in the event of this tank failure, we still protect the supply line to at least 70 PSI.